Chris here with High Seas Cruising and welcome to today's video. All right, we got several cruise news stories for you today, but first I want to start out with an update. So we did a video the other day where Carnival Cruise Lines had announced that any sailings that are five nights or less, pre-cruise testing would not be required. Well, Carnival has released a little update to that and is letting everyone know that yes, if the sailing is five nights or less, and you are fully vaccinated, a pre-cruise test will not be required with the exception of cruises going to Canada and cruises going to Bermuda. So if you're sailing to either of those two places, even if it's five nights or less, the pre-cruise test will still be required. It is a requirement from Canada and a requirement from Bermuda. So of course, Carnival has to follow that requirement and so, like I said, that's just a little bit of an update that it, even if it's a five night or less cruise, but if it's going to Canada and Bermuda, you will still have to test. So this past Sunday, the Carnival Valor, well, she had a five hour delay pulling back into port on Sunday morning. And Carnival has not been forthcoming as to why the Valor was five hours late. But of course, that causes everybody disembarking to be late getting off the ship, late for their flights. Everybody embarking on the ship on Sunday was told, hey, add five hours to your port arrival time and don't go ahead and show up early. But like I said, no real explanation as to why they were delayed or why, the, or why they were late. So if you happen to be on the Carnival Valor and were affected by this five hour delay this past Sunday, hey, let me know in the comments below. I'm just curious to know, was it weather related, engine related, you know, what exactly was the reason? Also this Sunday, the Carnival Paradise. Well, the Paradise rescued about 20 refugees in a small boat, very overloaded, between Cuba and Mexico. Now, the refugees were brought on board the ship. The local authorities were notified that they had taken them aboard. And this is the second time in a week that a Carnival cruise ship, you know, has pulled refugees and rescued re refugees from out inside the water. Back on July 29th, the Carnival Sunrise rescued 12 Cuban refugees south of Key West. So, been kind of busy, a lot of refugees, but thank God cruise ships stop, help people out, take them on board, and get them someplace safe. So, congratulations to those ship captains, of course, for doing the right thing. And for our last Carnival story, well, Carnival Cruise Lines, they have reached a new milestone since the restart of cruising with 3 million passengers having sailed on board a Carnival ship since the restart of cruising. Now, over the summer, Carnival is already running at and predicting they will keep running at 110% occupancy levels just to get through the summertime. And that breaks down to about 95,000 passengers over Carnival's 23 ships every single week. So if you're thinking Carnival's sailing around with a bunch of empty ships, a bunch of empty cabins, and they're not filling up their bookings, well, the numbers say a little bit different. It looks like Carnival's doing some pretty brisk business over this summer. All right, now we're gonna hop over to Norwegian Cruise Lines, and Norwegian Cruise Lines has officially taken possession of the Norwegian Prima, their newest Prima class cruise ship. Now the Prima is going to start off cruising over in Europe before coming over to the United States and doing sailings in both the Caribbean and to Bermuda and then heading back over to Europe for the summer season again. And finally, the Norwegian Pearl. So this past Saturday, off the coast of Nantucket, about 1.30 in the morning, the Norwegian Pearl and a fishing boat made contact with each other. Apparently there's some very thick fog visibility was down to around zero and these two vessels made contact now it's not real specific as to who struck who and all of the little details that led up to this collision i'm sure there's an investigation going on once that's concluded more details will be coming out but what we've gathered from the story so far is that the fishing boat collided with the side of the norwegian pearl some damage to the fishing boat it was towed back to shore the Norwegian Pearl was cleared by the Coast Guard and resumed sailing. 
one reported miter injury on the fishing boat that was treated on board the boat, and no reported injuries from anyone on board the Norwegian Pearl. And at this point, that's really all of the specific information that we have. Like I said, I don't know if the Norwegian Pearl got in front of the boat and caused it to hit on the side, if the boat just blatantly hit the Norwegian Pearl. Not real sure. Can't really point a finger and say, hey, it's your fault. It's your fault. Just don't have enough information. And like I said, that probably won't come out until they finish the investigation. And at that time, we hopefully will hear a little bit more, know a little bit more about how these two ships collided. And that's going to be your cruise news for today. If you have enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It is free to do so helps our channel grow, and lets you know anytime a cruise news video comes out or any of our other videos. Hope everyone out there has a really great day, and like always, we will see you out on the high seas.